Welcome to this video. We're going to talk today around the APM Mavlink. The Mavlink is a way for you to maintain a connection to the APM when it's actually flying as though it was connected to the PC via the USB cable. Normally when you're configuring and playing with the APM you connect it to Mission Planner using a USB cable and that allows you to do things like install the firmware and then do all the configuration as well. But one of the great things that you can do is using Mavlink is you can maintain that data connection while the craft is flying so you can monitor the telemetry information but also send it commands. Now Mavlink isn't something that you'd use to actually upload firmware you'd need a directly connected USB cable for things like that but if you wanted to wirelessly connect to the device to change a setting like how the motors behave when the APM is armed or one of those small things it's easily done over the wireless link. So in this video we're going to actually set it up on an APM 3.1. Now the reason we're doing it on the 3.1 is there aren't many videos on YouTube that explain how this is actually done and it has a special telemetry port at the bottom of the device that it would use to connect to something like a Minim OSD or in this case we're actually going to connect it to the Mavlink radios. A lot of the information that you'll find in this video is also covered in depth with additional bits and pieces at the copter.ardupilot.com slash wiki slash common using the 3DR radio for telemetry. If you um, search for 3DR radio telemetry ardupilot you should find it but I'll put the link in the description at the bottom. On these pages there is everything you wanted to know about how you configure the radios using an FTDI to USB cable that we'll cover in this video. Talking about the different uh, regions and which of the frequencies you can use in each and then talking about how you can do things like monitor the link quality and also talks about range as well as um, troubleshooting and doing things like doing firmware and forcing bootloader. So if you are interested in this and this is something you want to know more about, I would strongly recommend have a look at these web pages. They're full of fantastic information. So if you are interested in APM, uh, I have two APM series on YouTube already. One covers all the elements of APM 2.5, 2.6 and the Hobby King 2.7 version and another small series that covers the APM 3.1 itself. And in those videos we go through uh, setup, installation, modes, troubleshooting, arming, we go through auto-tune, mission planning, loads and loads of different stuff in there. So if you're interested in APM and you haven't seen those already, I recommend going and checking those out. But let's talk a little bit more about the Mavlink radios. So here they are in the flesh. You can get different versions available now. There are, these are similar to the official 3DR ones. These are actually clones that I'm using here. And there are two versions of the radio, one for each side of the link. The first side is the, um, is the easiest, which is the one that has a USB connector at the end. And this plugs into your PC or Mac or whatever you're running the Mission Planner on. It has a um, connector at the other end for the aerial and a couple of status lights. One shows whether or not there is a radio link with a remote radio and it goes solid when that happens and we'll look at that later. And the other one flashes when there's data coming over the link. The other side is the one that you actually install on the craft, slightly smaller, um, lots of different versions available for this. This is the one that I have with this very small um, connector at the bottom so this is one we're going to talk about about how you connect it to the APM because you do have to make a little cable up and uh, move things around so we'll cover a little wiring diagram so it's nice and easy for you to follow with that too. So let's talk about how it actually works so as I described it means that you can connect and maintain a connection to the craft while it's flying around and there are two versions available that you'll see when you look for Mavlink 433 and 915 megahertz. Now the difference between those two uh, is really about where you live. 433 tends to be used in Europe and the UK and 915 megahertz tends to be used in North America but each country has its own particular um, bits and pieces. So the actual elements that you need as we've kind of talked about a little bit already is on one side you have the uh, APM 3.1 that we're going to install it on 
you plug the airside radio into that the actual airside radio is powered from the APM 3.1 and then the ground radio just pops into the USB connector that Mission Planet is running on and then you click on connect isn't always that straightforward and we'll go through some troubleshooting and setup pieces in the video because when I first got this and tried to make it work on my original APM 2.5 I wasted about three days scratching my head. So first of all let's talk about how we connect the airside radio to the APM 3.1 because that is one of the trickiest bits. So time for a wiring diagram and a look a little bit closer at what these pinouts actually are. So we're looking at the underneath of the APM on the left and we're looking at the airside radio connected on the right hand side. And um, I'm just going to keep it this way around because it gives us the clearest view of all the bits and pieces. But uh, one of the easiest things to figure out is the pinouts on the airside radio. So uh, hopefully you can read that, but it actually says on mine which is ground, which is plus five volts, which is transmit and which is receive which is very helpful indeed. Uh, the pinouts for the APM 3.1 are of course slightly different, they always are. Um, the way it works is that you get uh, a number of cables with the APM 3.1 uh, and here's the one that plugs into this socket. Um, what you need to do is you need to get hold of that cable, you also need to get hold of whichever cable was supplied with your airside radio Here's um, a DF13 four pin connector, which is the kind of connector that's on here. And then what you need to do is, uh, if you haven't got a connector that will do both, is I cut this one in the middle and then solder the pins to each piece. I just happened to be very lucky and have a cable in my spares bin that had more or less both the right ends on, which allowed me to plug one end into the APM 3.1 and the other end into the airside radio. Okay, so let's jump into a little diagram and let me kind of explain what each of the pinouts are and then you can wire yours up the same way. So, uh, slightly zoomed in here, but it makes it easier for you to see what I'm doing. Um, the ground pins are both the two top ones because again, we're looking at the underside of the APM 3.1 board on the left and we're looking at the top of the airside radio. Double check your radio um, specifications if you have a different connector or a different style of board. Just make sure that the, the pinouts are the same, but this is the way that it works for me. So the ground is connected to ground, plus five volts is connected to the plus five volts, and then obviously the transmit is connected to the receive, and, and the receive is connected to the transmit. So those two wires are swapped over. So one is talking and the other one is listening on both boards. So if you do it that way, then that should be the air side connection done. As you'd imagine, the installation for the ground side radio having a USB connector is a piece of cake. You just plug it into the PC. The drivers for the ground side radio will be automatically found if you're using Windows 7 or later. And in a previous version where you might need a driver, go and have a look at those ardupilot.com pages we discussed before. Because there, there are links to the drivers that you need if you're running Vista or something earlier like XP. So, now we have it installed on the PC and we have it installed on the craft. Let me fire up both and I'll actually show you the Mavlink in operation and then we'll do some troubleshooting and show you how to do things like update the firmware. So here we have the two boards powered up and connected. You can see that each of them, hopefully, uh, the uh, video doesn't always pick it up brilliantly, has a solid green light. That indicates that we have a solid radio link, which is great, they're bound together. You'll also be able to see, hopefully, that there's a pulsing light on each of them in time. This one is green on the ground side radio, and there's a red one pulsing up there on the air side too. So that means the little heartbeat uh, that comes down just to keep the link alive is also running as well. So what I'll do now is I'll just um, we'll zoom on to the screen of Mission Planner that's just starting. I'll actually do the connection and um, what I'll do is I'll keep uh, a video 
um, looking down onto these in the corner so you can see what the LEDs do when it's working. So let's jump onto the netbook and have a look. Right, so in Mission Planner we can just check that the radios are all working. What we need to do is go into optional hardware, then there's 3DR radio, and once it's come up we can actually say load settings. Now what this is going to do is talk to the local radio first, get those settings, and then actually use the link itself to get the settings for the remote radio. Oops, let me check that I've got the right port selected. There we go, COM8. We have to select 57600 for the board rate and then say load settings. And what you'll see is more traffic as it's doing a number of commands that will actually return all the values. And we can see the local version and the remote version, which is great. And here's all the information. Fantastic. That means the link is absolutely working. And we can see that the board rate on each end is 57k. That's why it has to be 57k up there. Um, so that all looks like it's working, which is great. We can upload firmware and we'll do those things a bit later. But for right now, we are just happy that we can see both ends and all of the air side and the other bits and pieces. If you hover over each, it'll actually tell you um, what they all mean. Well, basically, they just need to be the same. So now let's go into flight data. And let's see if we can connect to the craft. So now we know that we can talk from the ground station radio to the airside radio. Now we just need to confirm that we can talk from the airside radio over the cable into the APM. And the way to do that is click connect. And it should negotiate the initial connection. And then hopefully we get the parameters. And here's the parameters coming down. And you can see now the lights on both of the radios are going bananas. And that is all of the traffic coming down. So now we have a live connection to the craft. If I actually tilt the craft, you'll see it um, live on the screen. Um, so that's proving that the connection is working. And um, I can now maintain a connection from Mission Planner um, all the way to the craft while it's actually flying. And the nice thing is, as the telemetry is coming down, and we can save it into a log file for review later and I have a video in that in the main set of videos. So great news, if it works like this you're golden, however it doesn't always go this simply. So to fix it, it tends to need a firmware update. So let's go through the firmware updates process so you can get that sorted as well. I'll disconnect so the radio isn't flashing while we do this. Going back into initial setup and clicking on the 3DR radio section, there's an option to update the firmware locally. Now this is obviously only going to update the one that it's connected to. So I could update the firmware easily here onto the ground station by just clicking firmware local. However, that doesn't help me um, upgrade the remote one. So if you're ever going to update the firmware, you need to update them both at the same time. So I'd recommend if it isn't working, first of all, plug in your ground station, click on upload firmware local, go through the process, and then once you've done that, we need to then use an FTDI connector and a little cable so that we can plug the airside radio into the PC and then click update firmware local again so that we can have both of the firmware updated. So let's just pause there and I'll show you the process and what you need to do to get the cable working. Here's the FTDI adapter with a cable. I'll show you how to make it in a mi minute. If you're not familiar with what the FTDI adapters are, um, you'll almost invariably end up with a number of these as you get more into the hobby. They're used to program all kinds of things uh, that have a serial link um, and, and make it so that you can connect them with a standard USB cable to your PC. Um, if you're already familiar with devices like MultiWii or MinimOSD or any of those kind of Arduino-based um, boards, then this is something that you should have in your kit bag. 
They're only five or six dollars. They're cheap as chips. You tend to get them with a lot of equipment uh, and you'll end up with a number of them. Um, and I have one now that I keep configured for things like the 3DR radio where we need the much smaller DF13 connection. So to connect this up, let's do that. We'll first of all unplug the radio from the quad. Let's remove the quad out of the way. We won't do that now. And um, let me just lay it out so we can see it. So here's the FTDI connector and the board. Let me just zoom in and uh, you'll be able to see the cables a bit clearer. So here's the airside radio, here is the FTDI connector. Now on the ones that I have here, I'm quite lucky, it actually tells me what the pinouts are. We already know what the pinouts on the radio are, so we just need to connect the two up together and then we have a USB port off the FTDI connector that we can use to plug into the PC. Now the ports on the FTDI connector, the way it works on mine, going from top to bottom, is um, DTR, RXI, TXD, plus five volts, CTS and ground. And as we know on the right hand side, it's ground at the top, plus five volts at the bottom and receive and transmit in the middle. And we connect it very similarly to the way that we did to the actual APM itself. First of all, we need to connect the five volts and the ground together, and then we need to connect transmit to the receive pin and the receive pin to the transmit pin. So again, while one is talking, the other one is listening on both boards. So once we have the cable all done uh, and looking like this, so each of those um, connections that we've just discussed are here, plus five volts, ground, transmit and receive, we can plug the FTDI board into the USB cable and we can plug the USB cable into Mission Planner. And again, select the look right COM port and click on Update Firmware Local. And this time it'll be updating the firmware on the board itself. So you don't need to worry about telling it it's the remote board. It doesn't worry about that. Once you have both sides flashed, then it might work. This is the problem that I had, and this is the way, after three days of scratching my head, I eventually got it sorted. Because in my instance, the ground radio could see the airside radio, but the airside radio was struggling to speech to the ASPM. I think part of it was the board rate wasn't 57600, uh, but also the firmware update sorted it. So that's how we update the firmware on the radios. So in conclusion, that's Mavlink. Um, I'd recommend if you do a lot of long range flying or you're interested in making a really fancy ground station that does all of the remote telemetry bits and pieces or you're looking to maybe fly the model simply using the ground station and the commands that you can send it like that then Mavlink is an option for you. Just be careful, make sure that you keep these aerials that come with the um, radios separate I would potentially even write on them, uh, if it's 433, write 433 or 915, whatever. These whip aerials are very easy to confuse with the 2.4 um, and 5.8 gig air whip aerials that you tend to get with FPV equipment. And if you do that, then you'll compromise the efficiency of the transmission. And if it's mismatched, then these things can start to get a bit hot. So make sure that you keep the aerials that come with the boards the same way round. So hopefully that helps. Please like, subscribe, and as always, happy flying.